Hello everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. In the last episode we went ahead and actually made our first network call. Specifically we hit a Rick and Morty service, that is a public API, to get a character by its ID. At the moment we have this hard-coded to character 2, but we're going to go ahead and enhance that today along with changing around our callback and our return type to actually match the data here. So taking a look at this JSON file, we can see a particular structure that exists for the response we're getting when we ask for a particular character by their ID. What we can do is we can actually generate a Kotlin data class from this particular schema so that Moshi can go ahead and parse the response into an object that we can then use in our code once the network request has returned. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this entire JSON here. And inside of our main package here, I'm going to go ahead and click right click new Kotlin data class from JSON. Now I'll talk about this in a second, but we can go ahead. This is basically a plugin that exists inside of Android Studio that we can paste uh, JSON into and then it will generate a data class accordingly. I'm going to go ahead and name the class of this file, this data class get character by ID response. I like to provide a little bit of insight into what the actual endpoint that you're hitting when you just read the data class. So you can very clearly see here that this is a get request. The endpoint we're hitting is the character by ID. And this is of course the response for that endpoint. So hopefully that makes sense and that could explain why these file names end up getting a little larger or a little bit more verbose just to basically allow for this readability just by the class name. So I'm going to go ahead and click generate here. We'll see it generated a file for us. So we can see that the JSON structure here has an, a field for ID, a field for name, status, an object for origin and location, and then an array for episodes. When we go ahead and look at our actual data class here, that plugin that I just used goes ahead and creates the appropriate structure based on this JSON. So you can see episode is denoted as a list of strings and it denotes to, of course, or sorry, it defaults to the obvious default value for this particular type. So strings are defaulted to empty strings, integers are defaulted to zero, and lists are defaulted to empty lists. We can go ahead and see origin and location in here are objects of type location and origin, and we can see their structures here as nested data classes within this particular data class. So this very simple uh, plugin is very quick for you to download and just super, super, super helpful. There's a whole bunch of config that you can go ahead and do to maybe change up defaults or nesting objects or nullability, those kinds of things. Um, but it's, very, it's a very good resource to have. So if I go ahead and hit command comma, it'll bring up this little preferences window and you can find yourself down here on the plugins tab and then if you go into the marketplace, you can search for uh, JSON to Kotlin class. You can just very easily click install. That will go ahead and install it. You'll have to restart Android Studio. And when it comes back up, you can just very easily right click, right click on a package here, uh, click new, and then the option exists in this little subfolder here. The last thing I want to note here is that the names of these variables correspond to the names of the keys here in the JSON object. So for instance, if for whatever reason the JSON returned an, uh, a field that said full name and that was Summer Smith, the actual name of this variable would have to be full underscore name. Uh, it couldn't be a regular, you know, full name like you might normally want to create if you're just creating the variable name yourself because Moshi will go ahead and match these class variables here to keys here in the JSON. So if there's any discrepancy here, Moshi won't know how to parse it. In this case here, if we wanted to keep name as the class level variable, but the JSON had full name, you can very easily annotate this a particular field here with something like this, uh, instructing Moshi that the JSON key that we're looking for is full name to match this key here. However, we're going to store it in an object here as, or sorry, in a field here that's just named name. So you do have a little bit of flexibility. If you're familiar with JSON, this works very similar, but for now, we're just gonna go ahead and keep things the way that they're supposed to be. 
Uh, we will get into mapping a little bit later, mapping network to domain layer objects, so we don't have to worry about that at this moment. But the big reason here that I wanted to do this is we now have an object that represents the structure of the response that we're expecting. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and close that inside of our service here. Instead of the call returning any a type of any, we can actually go ahead and paste in the object that we've just created. And then inside of our main activity where we are actually making use of this, we are now running into an error basically saying that we are required to pass in a callback of type get character by ID response. And here we are simply passing in any, which is just not going to cut it anymore. So I'm just going to go ahead and control G to select all of them, command V to paste. And now we have the correct callback parameterized to what we are telling retrofit to return to us. Now this is wonderful because we can actually go ahead and make use of this response. So we can see here the response object that is passed into us here on the uh, callback has a few methods that we can uh, use to our advantage. So at this moment in time is successful is something that we would like to care about because if we take a look at the documentation it says returns true if the code is in the range 200 to 300. So that means that this network call was successful and some data should exist in the body of this response. So we can very easily do something here saying if the response is not successful, we will just make a toast, let's say, and then we can just go ahead and return here. So we're saying if our response is not successful, we're going to toast the unsuccessful network call and then we're just gonna return. Otherwise, at this point, we can actually go ahead and make use of our response here. So we can say the body equals the response dot body. Now that is a nullable object, so we can go ahead and force it to be non-null. And then we can say name equals body dot name. And you can see here, inside of our body, we have all of the fields that are associated with this object we just created, the get character by ID response. So we have everything we need at this moment in time. So we're just going to go ahead and use name. And I've simply gone ahead and added an ID to that hello world text view right here. So we can grab that, which we do here in the beginning of our onCreate. And then inside of here, we can just very easily say text view dot text equals name. So now at this point, we are going to fetch a character by their ID. If we are successful, we will go ahead and update the text of our text view to have the name of the character. And rerunning the application here, we saw that it actually went hello world very quickly and then it updated to Morty Smith. And that's because once the API call came back, we parsed the data, we made use of the data, and we updated the UI here. The last thing I want to do in this episode is go ahead and update this function. At the moment, no matter how many times we call it or if we pass anything into this function, we do not get anything other than the Morty Smith character because we are choosing the character ID to be two every single time because of this. So what we can do here is use these curly brackets and say character ID. We can then accept a parameter inside of this function. And now we can fetch any character by their ID instead of always fetching character ID two, which in this case seems to be Morty Smith. But we can see here that inside of our path that we've defined here, we use these curly brackets and we have a little placeholder here called character ID. And inside of the parameters of this function, we go ahead and denote at path we pass in a particular value here that must correspond to one of the placeholders that exist in this path inside of these curly brackets. And then we just go ahead and define the type passing into it. So if we go ahead and take a look now, we see that where we are using this function, there is no value passed in for parameter character ID. And instead of two, let's say, let's get character 10. Rerunning the application here, we have Alan Rails, which I don't really remember who that is, but anyway, if we just go ahead and let's say 54, we can just go ahead and get another character by their ID. And it's Bobby Moynihan, right? So you can see how this actually works. Hopefully you can go ahead and get a taste as to how we are going to be able to fetch any character by their ID, assuming we have it. And in this case, we've just gone ahead and updated this implementation so that we can actually handle the response here to be of type get character by ID response 
and then when we are in a successful state we will go ahead and fetch the name and update the text view. So I think this is a pretty good stopping point for right now. And in the next episode, I think we'll go ahead and maybe build out a little bit more of a UI around our API responses. Maybe we even implement a little bit of a loading state or something along those lines so that we can go ahead and actually start to build out not only a UI, but a proper UX for all of our users, a user experience. And so that we can just provide a little more feedback, right? You see a loading symbol, you know that something is happening. So if you made it this far, I'd really appreciate a like to let me know that we are on the right track here with something that you are interested in. If there are any comments or suggestions, uh, please feel free to drop them down below. I'd love to hear some feedback. And in the meantime, I will catch you in the next episode. Subscribe if you are brand new so you don't miss out. And I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.